Hi team, Mr. Rousseau here, um, higher unit 2, question 11. So let's have a quick look at this. Um, it says here, find the original sequence of this. Uh, first thing to do is see what is it going up in. So we're adding 2 each time, these terms plus in 2. So what else goes up in 2s is your 2 times table, and in algebra we call that 2m. So 2m, which goes up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So this is my 2 times table. We then have to see how does this 2 times table shift to get to this sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. So 3, what do we do to 3 to get to uh, 2 to get to 3? 5 goes to the second term is 5, third term is 7, fourth term is 9, and then 11. So what is happening? How does it go from there to there? So as you can see, 2, how does it get to 3 with plus 1? Do we do the same thing here? 4 plus 1, does that give us 5? Yes, it does. 6 plus 1, yes. So that tells us our 2 times table has been shifted forward by 1. Okay, so we plus 1 to that. So our 2 times table is going to shift forward by 1. And it's going to produce this sequence that is given in the question. So that sequence is the m term will be 2m plus 1. So as that symbol is, we find out what steps it's going up in, and then we see that's the times table, and from there we see how is the times table moved to get to our sequence. Okay, let's just clear this. Let's just draw down to the next question 12. Again, it's a very similar style question. So we look at the sequence. What is this going up in? That's going up in 4. It's 4. That is also going up in 4. The same is happening there, plus 4. So it goes up in 4. So think of our 4 times table. 4 in. In algebra, we call it 4 times table. So we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. Now the 4 times table, 4 is going to go to 2, 8 is going to go to 6, 12 is going to go to 10, and 16 is going to 14. So what's happening to the 4 times table? Um, we're going to be shifting it by 2 backwards. So take away 2 from there. 8 to take away 2 is 6, correct? 12 take away 2 is 10, 16 take away 2 is 14. So my 2 times table, so, uh, 4 times table, subtract 2, so 4 times table, minus 2 will produce the sequence that is given in this question. So find the nth term of the sequence will be 4n minus 2. Now, it's asked you in part B, is 86 in the sequence, you must give a reason. Now, first of all, the easiest way to do this is to just get our m term for the sequence, which is 4n minus 2, and equate that to 86. Now, when we're solving this, if n turns out to be an integer, then 86 is in the uh, sequence, and if it doesn't, then it's not. So opposite of minus 2, take it to the side, becomes plus 2. So 4n equals 86 plus 2 is 88. Opposite of times 4, 4n means four times 4, take it to the side, becomes divided by 4. So n is 88 shared by 4, which is 22. And that is an integer term, so n has to be an integer as it is a, a term, as in first term, second term, third term. So this is integer. So yes, 86 is in our sequence. Okay. Good stuff. Let's move on to the to clear this. Let's draw down to question 13. Okay, there's another sequence, but this time it's a Fibonacci sequence. Let's just shrink this a bit so now we can get it all on one page. And let's have a go at this. Okay, so first of all, what you need to know about um, Fibonacci is the 
two previous terms makes the next term. Okay, so what that means is 1 plus 1 makes 2, 2 plus 1 makes 3, 3 plus 2 makes 5, uh, 5 plus 3 makes 8, etc. So let's just read this. Um, here's a, here are the first six terms of the Fibonacci sequence. The rule of Fibonacci sequence is the next term in the sequence is the sum of the two previous terms, as we said. So find the ninth term of the sequence. So what's this? First, second, third, four, fifth, six. Six is the seventh term. Eight plus five is thirteen. That's the seven to get the eight term. Thirteen plus eight is twenty-one. Eight term. To get the ninth term is twenty-one plus thirteen is thirty-four. Okay, simple. So thirty-four would be our ninth term. Uh, the first three terms of a different Fibonacci sequence are given. So first term, second term, third term. We showed that the sixth term is 3a plus 5. Okay, so first, second, third. To get the fourth term, we add this, these two previous terms. So a plus b plus b is going to be equal to a plus 2b. To the next term, we got a plus 2b plus a plus plus b, so a plus a is 2a, and 2b plus b is 3b. Um, so that's the fifth term. To get the sixth term, we need to get the fifth term plus the fourth term. So let's just write it here. So we've got to get um, 2a plus 3b, and the fourth, uh, fourth term is a plus 2b. If we add those together, we'll get 3a plus 5b as required. So, yeah, that is the sixth term. Okay, now it says here, given that the third term, 1, 2, 3, so this term is 7, so that's equal to 7. And the sixth term, which is this one, is equal to 29. Okay, find the value of a and b. Okay, so what we're going to get here is symmetric equations. So let's just write that one way with um, a plus b is going to equal 7. And we're getting 3a plus 5b. That is equal to 29. Okay, so I'm going to call this equation 1, call this equation 2. Now, when we're doing simultaneous equations, we need to eliminate one of those um, unknowns. Uh, in this case, um, I'm, I'm going to get rid of A, because I can simply multiply this equation by 3, and the 3A, take away 3A, will cancel out and leave me with A. So, Let's do this. So if I get equation 1, and multiply it by 3, that's going to give me my equation 3. So the equation 1, 3 times a is 3a. 3 times b is 3b. And 3 times 7 is 29. Now, my a's are the same, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two equations. So I'm going to get equation 2 and subtract equation 3, which will give me my equation 4. So if I subtract those, 3a take away 3a, there's no a's left. 5b take away 3b is 2b. And 29 take away 20, sorry, 29 take away 21 is 8. So therefore, b, what do you call 4? Now if b equals 4, and I'll put it in this first equation, sub that value b into this first equation, a plus 4 is 7, so a must be 3. So when it says work out the value of a and b, a is 3 and b is 4. Okay, take a moment, have a look at that. This topic is known as simultaneous equations. Um,
comes up often in GCSE, so you must learn this. Okay, let's scroll down to question 14. So, so yeah. here are the first five terms of a Richardson sequence. Okay, write down the expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence. Okay, again, we've done a few of these before now, so that's going up in four. That is also going up in four. That is going up in four. So it's going up in fours. So I think of my four times table. So I've got um, 4n, which will be 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. So that's my 4 times table. Now my 4 is going to 1, 8 is going to go to 5, 12 is going to go to 9, and then 16 is going to 13. So what have I done to my 4 times table? Well, as you can see from here, it's been shifted backwards by 3. So if I subtract 3 from each term, 4 take away 3 is 1, 8 take away 3 is 5, 12 take away 3 is 9, 16 take away 3 um, is 13. So my 4 times table has been shifted back by 3. So the nth term for the sequence will be 4n minus three. Okay, symbols. Um, let's see part B. The nth term of a different sequence is three n squared plus seven. Now this is a quadratic sequence. It goes here, find the tenth term of the sequence. So the tenth term of the sequence is basically saying n what is the value um, of the sequence when the tenth term with n equals 10. Okay, we plug that or substitute it into our expression. We get 3 and is replaced by 10 being squared. Then we add 7. So the 10th term value is going to equal to, so 10 values, so it's going to be 10 squared is 100 times 3, which is going to give me 300 plus the 7. So the 10th term in the sequence is going to have a value of 307. 